the map in paper with you, or I will also show you how you can download uh, topographic maps from the internet, how you can download them in your GPS. Uh, this is like the GPS, eh? this is not the smartphone or the mobile phone with GPS you are going to use in the forest because it's not weatherproof, it's not shockproof, the battery will drain in a couple of hours. Signal strength will not be good if you're in a dense jungle eh, with a lot of vegetation on top. So you're going to use an outdoor GPS. So this, I mean, typically Garmin has a lot of good, rugged outdoor GPS. I think they start at, at 5k for an, uh, a base model and somewhere like 10k I think for a good, uh, like a GPS map 62 model. Okay, maps, of course maps you have to carry with you. We'll talk about that later again a little bit. Next. Ropes, the ropes are very important, right? As you have seen, there are uh, waterfalls, there are steep drops here, so it's always a very good thing to carry, like a rope. Uh, don't carry like this uh, cotton ropes, this is like a cotton rope ball, like a small ball. Small rope is useful, I mean, in cotton, uh, to set up a tent or to fix some mats to your luggage. But really for climbing and for holding the weight of people, you need a solid rope. Uh, so this is like nylon rope. You can find it again in any hardware shop. Pretty cheap, yellow, black rope. It's very lightweight, which is one good thing, and it's a big, it, it will not stretch like a cotton rope. So if you climb up, you will not kind of uh, kind of move. And it's pretty strong. Uh, next one. First aid kit, of course. You're in the middle of nowhere, so you cannot call 109, 108. You cannot go to the, the pharmacy after the, after the turn in the valley. You have to carry like some basic stuff. And of course, if something severe happens, it's, it might also be on your reach. But some basic stuff to clean up some cuts, some wounds, disinfect, uh, some bandages, right? If you're walking, you get new shoes, you wet shoes, you get blisters, you want to put some bandages. Uh, so this is basically like first um, like an aspirin, like some uh, problem with the stomach, so some very basic stuff actually. Next. Lining your veil, so this is like a very dedicated session, I'm going to put this to the end. Uh, people who are interested a little bit more in depth, I'm going to take you uh, through like a real world scenario, how you plan step by step, like a three day trek, like the one I showed you in the beginning, right? I told you how do you get to the other side of the hill. We'll put all the knowledge that we have learned together and like plan step by step, ridge by ridge, valley by valley, how we kind of get to, to the other sides in a detailed uh, session. But we'll do that later. Uh, we'll first go to the easy stuff, then a little more interest, less technical stuff. We'll skip like 10, 20 slides, sub up until we come to the uh, a little more interesting topic. Okay, so this I think we also need to cover. cover. A little bit. Now, next, next one. This is the one important thing that you have to keep in mind uh, while trekking is the weather, of course. As I told, say, is there water in that valley? It's not only depending on the, 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 the season of the year, or how many months is behind the monsoon. But the same river bed could become very dangerous in the monsoon weather. In like millions of liters of water flush through that stream and a very dangerous, dangerous current. So when you plan a trek, it's not just the map, it's the weather and it's the season which is as important to plan your uh, trail. Next one, trek difficulty, stop, stop. So can you tell me a little, let's do a little bit of, again, interactivity. What would define the difficulty of a trek, you know, the difficulty of a trail? Why do we say in CTC difficult, moderate, easy? Can you give me like some 10 bullet points that define the difficulty of a trek? Altitude, definitely, right? Climbing a 100 meter peak, Palavaram Hill, opposite the airport, or going to Navala, uh, which is an 800 meter, or going to Palani, which is 2,100. The more you climb up, it, the tougher it's going to become. Availability of water, I think, even more than the altitude, this is important. If you don't have water for four hours, you're going to become in big trouble. I'm talking from experience. Sometimes we plan. We, and we think there is water, there is no drinkable water and we sometimes get in serious trouble with 20 people not being able to drink and to kind of uh, hydrate or like you know, until we find like a, a valley which has water. So water planning is, is one of the most important things and the same track, the same trail in the monsoon could be very easy, the same trail in the summer can be like a hell sometimes. 
What else? Distance recovery. Distance, obviously, yeah. The rain, obviously, right? If you want a nice, grassy, uh, rich versus like, you have seen some of these big boulders there. Your average speed can drop down quite a bit. Wild animals, wild animals indeed. Yeah, you have to be. So we'll talk about wild animals in a, in, a, in a second, but indeed you have to be a little careful going to places with, uh, like, say, wild elephants and stuff. Unknown. Yeah, exploring versus going to the same place again the second time is, is the difference between black and white sometimes. Fitness. 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 Yeah, fitness level, eh? And why do we do fitness? <laughs> why do we do a fitness step? It's very important, learned again through years and many bad experiences, that if you take people on a moderate track, difficult track, that you have a good understanding of the fitness level. The fitness level of the people has to match with the fitness level, I mean the challenge and the difficulty of the trail. Plus, remember if you take out 20 people, you might have 19 fast people, but if it is one person who is not properly screened, the whole group will suffer. So too many bad experiences in the past, that's why we do uh, excuses please to do a fitness test now because again many people are not able to really assess which is okay I mean unless you have been there you don't have a clue what's waiting for you you don't really know what's how challenging a certain track is a model track is until you have really been there what else uh, duration obviously our duration and we talked about distance duration is something else they're not always equal most of the time I never talk about distance in, in the field, I always talk about how many hours do we need to reach there. Okay? Because one kilometer on, on one terrain would take as long as, as 100 meters in some other terrain. What else defines the difficulty? Yeah. Rules in the uh, physical obstacles, waterfalls, rules, vertical drops will, will take a lot of time sometimes, especially with again, a group of 20 people going one by one along the rope, getting all the backpacks. Carrying the backpacks along a pool is sometimes takes so much time. So you have to plan this thing in order to reach your campsite on time. What else? Swimming knowledge. Swimming, yeah. If you have like 19 non-swimmers and one swimmer, it's going to become a <laughs> difficult thing to cross that uh, deep water stream and meet. So one time I'll have to pull up everybody over the water. What else? Any? No, weather indeed, so anytime the weather can change, you have to be very careful. We have been in situations where we have a nice flat stream. You just camp next to the stream like 100 meters, like I mean, 2 meters from where the water flows. The water flows a little down, I'm sleeping here. With some heavy rain, and sometimes you don't even notice because the rain can be upstream in the mountains. And then all of a sudden, within 30 minutes, the rush, the level of the water increases and, and the campsite gets flooded. You have to be very careful with weather conditions, whether it's dry weather or rain. What else? Indeed, if it's like rocky, like any old boulders or rocks, or, or like if you have to climb up, because much more difficult than walking on a sand trail or, or a grass beach, correct? Uh, okay, I think we have. If you can just expand one by one. Uh, do, 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 do. Go cool, yeah, you can do all of them till the end. So in this, I think most of it is covered. So these are all things, it's not like I have the map and I plan it and that's it. There are so many factors you have to take into account and that's one, what one person was also saying. It requires lots of experience actually, you have to go for 5, 10 tracks before you get a feeling of, of all these things firsthand. Okay, next. Okay, so this is just about how we do it in CDC, right? We send you an email with a link, you click on the link, and this is how all your responses come to the organizers. So for us, it's easy to kind of go through this list. We have your name, your contact number, and we can uh, contact you through email, we can check your profile a bit. We know where to pick you up, uh, who is bringing my card. So these are Google, what they call Google documents, Google Forms make it very easy for us to collect data from the participants, do a short listing and then stay in touch with you. Uh, very important, CTC, we are not a commercial group. Uh, if I organize the trick, it's not that I'm going to do the work and you guys will all be sitting on your lazy butt. It's a volunteer group. 20 people go for the trick, everybody is going to contribute in one way or the other. And there are lots of ways you can contribute. Somebody will have to take care of the accounts, right? Okay. What is the expense of fuel, food? Divided equally, uh, spread among the participants. 
Some people, fewer people know about navigation, of course. Many people contribute to cooking. Some people will fetch firewood and set up a campsite. Some people bring cars to go to the base of the track. Some people will do blogging or photography. And then before the track, we need quite a few volunteers. Three-day track, 20 people, 60, yeah, 60 kind of, 60 multiplied by three meals per day is 180 kind of meals. So there's a lot of food to be bought sometimes before the trek. So please, if you participate, also participate as an active volunteer rather than kind of uh, sitting there. Okay, ready to go? So stop, don't go further. So as an organizer now, what would be, you think, the five, the five key points, the five most important aspects so when I say ready, it means now you're ready to go in the field, right? You have planned your trail, you have looked at your map, you go in the field. Now, what are the five main challenges that an organizer would face? Numbering, numbering, road call, road call, road call, numbering of the people, one, two, three, like. Yeah, indeed, the, 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 group, the group size, that's one aspect, yeah. So then we talk about people, it's the size of the group, the type of the people, right? It's in, in, in this case again, it's an open group, so uh, we, we, I mean, we typically end up with like 20 people. Sometimes we don't know each other. We don't know the people, so you put 20 strangers in an isolated jungle, and, and you have to kind of overcome obstacles as a team. You can imagine sometimes that involves challenges as an organizer. What else? Time management. Time management. Yeah, very very important. I'm telling you. Hey, you, if you go on a trek that organizer, you might seem very peaceful, but in his mind, constantly a good organizer always keeps an eye on time. He sees the sun is rising, the sun is midday, uh, he sees the angle of the sun, he knows it's 4 o'clock and it's going to be dark in two hours. We need to reach that campsite, we need to reach that water point, we need to reach safely before dark to set up a proper camp. Time, 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 always scheduled time should be running through your head as an organizer. What else? So people time, what else? Yeah, that's all people, I, I, I keep it under the people aspects. And uh, yeah, That's all people, yeah. So if, under every topic, people time, there will be a lot of sub bullets, but main categories, what are the five key main categories that in, that are really the main challenge as, as a threat? Safety. Or, or, safety. Safety, yeah. That's again related to people, and you have to get 20 people safely back home. Uh, Weather, yeah, that's a, that's a good one. I think weather seasons, those things are, are very important as we discussed because weather means availability of water. Right? You, you need water to drink. But then again, if it rains, it rains too much, you could be in big trouble as that's too much dangerous water currents out there in the valley. Uh, what else? Uh, people, that's all goes under the people aspect. Fitness level, like safety. Uh, handling difficult people, handling slow people, that's, that's why you need... The terrain where the... Uh, no, exactly, obviously, right? The terrain. The terrain or... Uh, that's another one. Now, terrain, obstacles, that all goes under the same. So we can expand some and indeed. So, in that click, click, I think there are five things will pop up. I think we covered all in water, of course. Water, of course, is related to the climate and the terrain. But I also wanted to capture it separately because water is very important. So on a three-day trek with 20 people, everyone drinking four liters of water per day, you cannot carry 200 liters of water, right? That's important, that's impossible. So you're gonna rely on local water. Local water is pure, if it runs really, I mean, it's rainwater basically, it's filtered through, through thousands of small cavities uh, it's mixed with, with herbal, so it's, it's very sweet, it's very nice what you find in the jungle. But again, these are the things that are constantly running through the head of an organizer and, and under each and every of these categories, we have several bullet points. So going on a trek is, is not, I mean, organizing a trek is not a simple thing. So again, I mean, we, we talk about trekking here, I'm giving you a lot of hints how to organize a trek, how to plan a trek. But again, be very careful, it's not a simple thing. There are a lot of things involved. The jungle is also sometimes a dangerous place if you don't know it. There have been fatalities in the past uh, in CTC, outside CTC, so be careful. I'll talk a little bit about dangers also. Uh, so I, I, I just want to give a, a word of caution. It looks sometimes nice. The pictures on the website, that you, everyone who is a member of the group gets these nice photos of waterfalls and nice experiences in post like write-ups. But at the same time, be very careful. I mean, go first with a couple of experienced groups or organizers, whoever it is before you attempt to go by yourself because, uh, I mean, 
this Austin and Fate are always working there, and you're on your own, obviously. Okay, managing the group now. So, so people. Uh, so, I'll, can somebody tell me what's the time? I just want. Four twenty. Four twenty. Okay. So again, so we have these five things, people, the terrain, uh, weather, uh, we have water, right, and we have the, the other things. So under each of these things now, managing the group, so I think we need to spend some time on this anyway. So managing people, I mean, what, what are like, the, what are the difficult challenges? I mean, it's not like the organizer takes care of everything, but in the track, what would be the, like, again, 10 bullets related to position for, for two days? Overnight camping and you, you, your trail and everything. So what are, what are like 20 things that you'll have to manage that could go wrong, that could go fine? Communication. Yeah, communication definitely very important. This, uh, I think Ben is the, the nail on the head here. So it's very important that at all times you keep actually the group together. I mean, in communication or visibility, I mean, you can definitely go a little ahead. If you have 20 people shortlisted on, on Saturday morning, you take them out, obviously, they'll have a different fitness level. Plus, people will always want to go ahead. Some people will even unexpectedly go in trouble with some cramps, so they go in the back. But at all times, it's very important at regular points that you sync up the group. Don't let people get away from the main group while you're calling for disaster. What else? Oh, that's again related to the same thing. We can have a navigator and we can have a sweeper, right? And everybody should be within those two guys. That's very essential. I mean, I cannot I repeat it enough. Uh, uh, enough. That's like very important. What else? I mean, related to people, what could be the problems you face with 20 guys or what girls are going on a day? Attitude. Yeah, sometimes it's really <laughs> a challenge to way more than the terrain. You'll be managing people in the terrain sometimes. So it's, it's very important, I mean, that uh, we all leave our ego a little bit behind and all work as one team, uh, contributing together and working and following one guy. There should actually be one boss, one manager, one organizer, because if the, if the group splits up again, you're uh, calling for disaster to happen. What else, people? Safety. Yeah, health conditions, uh, fitness, safety, very important, right? You need to make sure that anyone in trouble, cramps, cuts, bleeding, uh, not feeling well there, that you kind of immediately take care of, of, of uh, people in trouble. What else? Sleeping essential for sunscreen. Yeah, indeed, everyone needs to be pre uh, come prepared with must carry, with all the must carry items on the list. Uh, indeed, uh, that's important. And you should not carry too much again, or they will get in trouble carrying too much weight. So I think we can expand a little bit, Sava. So I just put here, like, doom, 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 doom. So these are all the, I mean, things we can talk. Yeah, we can talk a lot about this, but I want to move ahead a little bit. We have interesting sections coming next, like GPS and navigation. If you go back, let them maybe read some up. So these are like key aspects, right, in uh, kind of managing your people. So the next one then, managing the trail. I think let's expand a little. So managing the trail, there are like a couple of, uh, these are all the things that you have to manage. Uh, as you kind of take your people through the jungle, or sometimes even you might be carrying that GPS, but in some places when it's like a steeply cut gorge or valley, no. So you suddenly don't know anymore where you are, where your position is on the map, uh, vegetation density, and all these things, crossing gorges, crossing pools. Resolution of the map, as I said, 50% of the, of the obstacles in the field are not visible on the map. Next one. Managing time, yeah, we can expand. So this is all in the things that are running constantly through the head of the organizer, basically to kind of um, make sure that the team exits the second day, Sunday night, uh, at the right place at the right time. So a lot of things determined. I mean, delays with people, delays with terrain, group size, new versus a known trail. All these things will have a huge impact on the trail. You cannot say this trail takes five hours. This trail does not take five hours. This trail takes uh, five hours, but it all I mean, might take five hours. But it depends a lot on all every single of these bullets. Any of these bullets, basically, which gets messed up, can suddenly make it uh, ten hours. Next, managing water. So here you can see a beautiful picture which you saw earlier. 
So I see that the water level sometimes can uh, become dangerously low. So, uh, so it's, it's, it's always running there on solid rock, but sometimes that water might not be accessible to you, even if it's there. Next one. So a lot of things, again, you have to keep in mind. It's not like it's there, it's not there. A lot of factors that uh, depend whether the water is there or not there. Many, uh, I mean, many new people make the mistake that they are getting one liter of water. We don't have, say, water for the next two hours. We go and because we go from one valley to another valley. It's very important that you take water with small sips. You just say, for plan for those two hours that you don't have water, and you equally, you uniformly uh, consume your water. You don't drink it up, I mean, even though you want to drink it up instantly. Uh, you're having, you're thirsty. The sun is beating on you. You're exhausted, you want to drink, drink, drink. And that's a big mistake because the next two hours again you're going to be in trouble. So it's important that you keep an eye on people that the water reserves are properly used. When you leave the stream, you have to make sure that everyone fills up the water bottles again before you climb onto the ridge and you, you go over the peak and to the next valley. So managing water is extremely important and it's a challenging thing. Next, and then managing climate, of course. Pick, pick, pick. So climate is. Yeah. So climate depends again on many different things and in the next slide you can see a nice one, right? So Kabinali in the monsoon and the same Kabinali in the uh, in the summer. This is actually in the month of February. So you climb on the ridge, it's dry, it's sunny, and here it's misty, the sun is not there, it's, it's enjoyable. So you climb, say, in this, in this real life example, we go from National Highway 48, 200 meter altitude, we climb a peak at 1200 meters. So there's an increase in elevation in 1,000 meters. I still remember on this track, I never opened my water bottle. It was like a 5 kilometer ridge, 1,000 meter climb. I never drank because I was not thirsty. On the right side, same ridge in the summer. We carried 2 liters of water. After one hour, people were out of water. And everyone was in trouble, thirsty, thirsty. They were thirsty and they had been dehydrating a lot. So the season is like makes a huge difference between easy and difficult tracks on the same trail. Okay, managing climate again, winter. So climate, tick, 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 it depends on the altitude, the season and everything. And then the next one, uh, so here managing climate, the monsoon. So in the monsoon, obviously, there's a lot of water coming down through typically very few canals, very few valleys. So you have to be very careful crossing streams and uh, camping near uh, streams, basically. Next one, so monsoon tracking here, you can see a typical picture of the monsoon track, so quite comfortable, I mean easy, you don't dehydrate, you don't sweat much, uh, but at the same time, of course, in the next slide then, sometimes it can be a challenge, we go to the next one, Sava to cook, so this, this is a monsoon track in Kabinali, it was raining three days continuously, and you're walking in wet clothes, wet shoes, three days, um, you don't find dry wood to, to cook or to camp, to keep yourself warm in the night, you have to put a tarpaulin sheet even to, to be able to make a bit of a fire with the camphor and uh, cook some warm soup at the end of the day. It's no dry place to sleep. And when we talk about monsoon, we talk about these little buggers. These are leeches. Luckily in the eastern gas where you mostly go, leeches won't be there that much because it's a bit dry and sunny. But if you go to the western gas in the rainy season again, or up till uh, two months behind the monsoon, you'll have these little uh, little buggers. So on the left side you can see a, a family picture. <laughs> Appa, Amma and Uki Baba there. And the problem is these guys will be sucking at the same spot so after like five leeches hang on the same place it becomes sometimes as you can see quite bloody. Again they are harmless. I mean it looks yucky and it looks a little kind of scary and bloody but I mean they're just a couple small quantity of blood. They're quite harmless. Uh, of course it's more like a mental thing. Sometimes they suck to an area wash away. And one hour later again, leeches will be sucking on your uh, feet. So one good thing is actually to use uh, leech socks, I think, that we have been using in recent times, which protect you up to the knee uh, for leeches. Here you can see, again, during the monsoon, so here, as you can see, it looks very peaceful, this thing. But as you can see, the, the current is very high. So here we are trying actually to cross the stream from that side to this side. And oh, you can see people were small, right, who are uh, deeper into the water, they almost get washed away sometimes. So I should be a little careful, sometimes you need a human chain, you need a rope to get people across like deep or uh, fast running water. 
Uh, water can be very dangerous, so always be careful uh, around streams. Okay, this will pick up at the end of the session, people who really want to go a little bit. Okay, now sorry, this is a different link. This is a, a nice link, which is also there on the website. Uh, we have on the top of the website, we have a couple of pages. One is safety, caution. This, this is uh, one of our organizers, the old organizers, Ravi from Bangalore, who has actually made a nice list of all safe, uh, safety precautions to take on tricks. Campsites, so good campsite is typically a flat place next to the water, right? So you can cook, you have drinkable water. You can then uh, cook again in the morning or uh, drink, eat in the morning and do your morning duty. So finding a campsite is sometimes not easy. I mean, jungle is really a, like a bumpy, a rocky place. So finding a, a, a kind of a flat space can sometimes be a challenge and can also be the reasons why sometimes we're not able to identify a good campsite, flat space, and water by the end of the day so that we have to proceed sometimes in the evening with some night trekking. Next, making a tent again, same thing, I think this we already covered, right? Campsites, you can make different shapes of tents. Sometimes, this is in a trek in Palani where we are walking in pretty dense jungle. This is actually on the escape road. This is an old jeep trail built by the British in the uh, 1920s. Kind of an, they call it escape road. The British were scared of an invasion from the Japanese at the east. And uh, this escape road connects Kodai Canal, which I think was one of their summer holiday places to the uh, to Muna, so they could escape quickly. So here we are actually quite progress very slow because there are a lot of trees falling down, a lot of dense vegetation, very slow progress. So eventually kind of we have to settle down without drinkable water on this jeep track which is somewhere close.